It's time to get your geek on. It's Two Geeks TV. With your hosts, Victor and Sean. So Victor has a uh, bullet point thing here for me to talk about. So we'll start way back in 1983. So I was 27 years old, about ready to stop trying to get into comics because I had a job at Lockheed and doing technical illustration and had a house and a kid. And I wasn't going to be a 30-year-old guy walking around a convention going, hey, look at my stuff. You know, because no offense to any 30-year-old guys who are walking around conventions right now saying, look at my stuff. I didn't want to do that. Came out the trial book, Marvel trial book, which was about, I think, $13, $14, which seemed like a lot of money at the time. And it was seemed like a gimmick to take money from kids. So I wasn't even going to buy it. And a friend of mine gave it to me. And um, I won first place out of 19,000 entrants, which 18,700 of them were, you know, like 10-year-olds. So, because it was a gimmick to take money from kids. But... Got me a trip to New York and, you know, got my first job in comics there. And for about a year and a half, I lived on about three to four hours of sleep a night doing comics in the evening and working at Lockheed. And right as Lockheed started laying off, which they do periodically, um, I got enough comic book work coming in to quit Lockheed and do it full time. Been doing it ever since. My first regular gig in comics was The Visionaries, which was a toy tie-in comic involving holograms and these armored characters changed into animals. And um, it was terribly stupid and terribly bad, but it was actually good training because it was a te- kind of a team book. It was all these characters running around, so you kind of learn how to, how to draw a team book. And nobody's, nobody saw it, nobody read it practically, so I could do all this stuff and learn on the job because I was terrible back then. And I had a lot of growing to do. So I did that, and then I worked on um, Strike Force Mortory for about a year, I think. And uh, trying to get better and trying to get better. I was working 80, 80 hours a week, maybe 90 hours a week. I mean, I was working out of the house, so it was, you know, I wouldn't get dressed in the morning. I'd work in my pajamas until, well, pretty much all day, which, to be honest, is pretty much what I still do. Um, until I go out and get the mail. I figure a grown man should be in his pants when he goes out to get the mail at 2 o'clock in the afternoon. Um, and then, so, after Visionaries, I hooked up with Fabian Nisiesa, which is the correct pronunciation of that name. And we did New Warriors. And um, I had, it was a great experience. It was like 25 issues or so. And um, I love Fabian. Love working on the book. It was a lot of work. I was growing at it as an artist like crazy. I mean, just I was learning so much and trying to improve. Uh, in the interim, Danny Fingeroth, who was the editor of the New Warriors book, also got the Spider-Man books under his wing, and I became pretty good friends with him. And and Amazing Spider-Man came available, and he, and he knew that that was always my dream book to get on. And if he didn't get get me on it, I'd take my gun and go shoot him. And so he gave it to me because you know. He's a New Yorker, and he's scared of guns. Um, so, for a while, I did New Warriors and Amazing Spider-Man together, and uh, I left for Amazing Spider-Man, and uh, I did a whole bunch of those. And you know, I was involved in creating Carnage, and if I'd have known he was going to be around so long, I'd have drawn him easier to draw because he's a pain in the ass to draw to draw him well. All those swirls and black, you know, markings and stuff. So I was on. I think I was on Amazing for. Th- four years maybe five I mean quite a while and um, right about the time you know of the big image guys taking off and and a little bit of an implosion thing happening um, I was having trouble getting work at Marvel because of political stuff going on um, up above me just and I was under contract but I just, you know, I was looking for a, kind of a new gig. I wanted to get off Amazing Spider-Man, which is weird saying that now. You want to get off Amazing Spider-Man? Why? Uh, but it just was time. And um, 
So they started, I forget what they call it, but you know, they, they created a bunch of books to replace the books that uh, the image guys had taken over. And so Kurt Busiek got me on Thunderbolts with him. He really wanted me, and uh, they tried to talk him out of hiring me. Hey, we can get you somebody new and hot and that sort of thing. And at that point, I've been in business like, what, eight years? So I'm not even hot anymore or new. And so but Kurt really wanted somebody who could you know, tell the stories and could do a monthly book, which is getting rarer and rarer and rarer. And uh, I had a blast with that for, I don't know, maybe 50 issues or so. It was a long, it was a long run because Fabian came and took the book over, and uh, I worked with him again. So... But once again, it was a team book, which is a lot of work, and it was it was a lot of fun, and I'm still hopefully progressing in my art, such as it is. Ultimate Spider-Man got offered to me, and I turned it down three times because John Byrne had just done his year one thing with Spider-Man, and it had gone over like a fart in church. I mean, it was terrible, and I wasn't still really wasn't happy with some stuff that was going on at Marvel, and. Uh, you know, it's kind of my home, but a lot of times when you're at home, things are unhappy. Just ask my wife. Um, but boom, boom. So, uh, so, and I just thought, you know, it was pitched to me as a six issue miniseries by this guy named Brian Michael, somebody or other who I'd never heard of, and he's an indie writer. And you know, I just turned it down. I didn't think it'd be anything. And they finally convinced me to do it. They said, "Look, if you don't," they didn't say this, but they intimated, "Look, you're always looking for a little extra work because you can do more than one book a month, but." you don't take this you, you can forget get, getting any extra work and uh so i took it on and i got the first script and it was like 63 pages long because it was a it was a like a 40 40 page first issue it was a double size and the script it was the longest comic book script i've ever seen in my life and i'm like hey, he's not even in a fucking costume what is this so i didn't get it but it was i drew i you know i did the best i could with it and was drawing it and I was like four issues in drawing it before the first issue came out and I told him I was leaving I, you know I said no I'd like to do something else when this is over and then they came back and said well it's going to be an ongoing would you like to stay on and I said not really well the first issue came out and it looked beautiful the coloring was great the inking was great the paper was the best paper I'd ever had and the fans really liked it and the friend of mine who gave me the Marvel Trout book is a guy named Cliff Biggers, and he owns the bookstore that I go to. And he said, look, he called me and says, you want to stay on this book. You shouldn't get it. So I called Marvel back and said, well, I'd like to stay on the book. And, and they were like, oh, thank God. He said, because uh, Bill Jemis, who was running the whole deal over there, was really pissed that I was leaving. He thought somebody had fired me. And so who fucking fired Bagley? He didn't. We didn't fire him. He quit. So, uh. I stayed on that book for like 114, 117 issues with Brian because I love Brian. And as I was telling Victor, it's it's not so much about the characters anymore. It's all drawing. Drawing is drawing. And it's if the stories are good and you're having a good time with who you're working with, then that's what I look for now. And that was the perfect situation then. Plus, we did really, really well sales-wise. So, uh, you know, it was... Um, this is the best experience of my comic career, really. Um, and then, like a dumbass, I left that book. And not like a dumbass. It was it was time to leave. It was, you know, it had been long enough, and I felt like I, I needed to do something, uh, some other stuff. And uh, ever since then, I've been looking for something else to do that I enjoy half as much, and I haven't found it yet, even though I've worked with some good people. I just felt like Marvel was sort of taking me for granted, and I needed to rock the boat a little bit and it was you know my contract was up at marvel and it was just it was it was time to go so i gave it a shot at dc i really was kind of hankering to draw superman and batman and wonder woman and those guys and because nobody wants to go over there and draw like you know well elongated man or some goddamn thing so uh i got over there and it started doing it started with trinity which was going to be this great book about you know, it would come out weekly, and I would do half the issue, which I could do back then. I was faster back then. I'm old now. And um, it was going to be Batman, Superman, and Wonder Woman, and it, it was going to be with Kurt. Well, I love Kurt. And by the time I got done, it was like everything. Holy shit, another act. Can't you Canadians drive? Jesus, that's like the fourth accident I've seen. It's a beautiful day. There's not even snow on the Oh, that's the problem. You're just not used to not having snow. <laughs> uh, anyway. So, so, uh, 
<laughs> so it turned into every, everything but Batman, Superman, and Wonder Woman. And I, I don't know, I don't know if there's anybody to blame for it or what, but it just got out of control. I mean, that one point, a big point of this thing, Superman, Batman, Wonder Woman are all gods, including Batman. I'm like, what? So got that in my review mirror. Did a couple issues of Batman, which I really enjoyed. Actually, <laughs> those, are the, those three issues are like the mo- my most fun at DC. And uh, then I was given JLA as an ongoing and with James Robinson. And we were sort of screwed from the beginning on that because they wouldn't let us use Batman Superman or Wonder Woman. We had to use Dick Grayson and Donna Troy and uh, Batman Superman and Wonder Woman. Um, and and uh, mon L. Oh, who then became Supergirl, which is great. I mean, I love drawing Supergirl. But, uh, you know, it was just... Uh, we we starting off the bat we got stuck with the the blackest night storyline you know shoehorned into what we wanted to do and they kept get, taking characters away from James and I think they were driving him up the wall at the time I really do he didn't tell me that but I could I could kind of tell so I did that for about a year and a half and about that point you know I was about sick of DC for a little while and uh, so I called Marvel and said hey and when I left I'd left on really good terms in fact Joe Casada said that you know he said. You, get on, you want to come back in three months, come back in three months. And he said he almost never says that. Nobody leaves in that kind of situation, but they would be glad to have me back. So Brian called and said, hey, we were going to, uh, at first I was going to do all new X-Men. Uh, you know, the young X-Men coming to now, you know, the book that Stuart Inman ended up doing so beautifully. Um, but that changed into, hey, guess what? We're going to kill Ultimate Peter Parker, and we'd like you to do it, which... It's a hell of a compliment. So I did the death of Spider-Man, and Ultimate Spider-Man, and um, had a great time doing that. I mean, you know, was, you know, you go through where you're drawing well, and then you're not drawing well, and you can't figure out why, and all of a sudden it's back, and you're doing, you know, and I was at a, on a, in a really good place right then. I drew my ass off in that book, and uh, Brian and I had the longest run on a mainstream comic. Uh, we beat Jack and, uh, what's the other guy's name? Uh, Stan's. <laughs> record on Fantastic Four of uh, they did 101 issues. We ended up doing I think 114, 117, and um, it was uh, it, it, I, the only reason I could stay on that long is because I was loving it so much. So, so like I said, I left to go DC and all that worked out. So then I came back to Marvel, Death of Spider Man. In the interim, I did four or five issues of a book called Brilliant with Brian, a creator own thing, which to be honest, I'm just not fast enough to do two books at w- once now and it just kind of got on the back burner and Brian got very busy being famous being Brian and uh, so we're hoping to one day maybe make a TV show out of it or something. Um, Why well, you laugh? You laugh! Don't be laughing! Um, so I did a, a short run with Brian on Avengers Assemble, which had Guardians of the Galaxy in it, which would have been great to do now. Um, I did the uh, I had a run on Fantastic Four. I, I can tell I'm blowing this away now. Um, <laughs> after Fantastic Four, I think I went on to the Hulk and had a great time with that. I worked with Mark Wade for a couple of issues, and then he left. Uh, he told me for personal reasons. I think just because he hates me. Um, a lot more conservative than he is. Anyway, I don't think that's the case. But uh, uh, they put uh, Jerry Duggan on that, and he and I got along great and had a great time doing Omega Hulk. Um, he wasn't really the Hulk. He was more like Bruce Banner Hulk, and, you know, that's what I think. I really wanted to do kind of old-school Hulk. But I got the good thing about it was I got used to drawing that kind of character, which I've been known for, like, skinny teenagers and Spider-Man and, you know, and when you amp up to draw a character like the Hulk, I, I've done it, of course, but I've never done it enough to get comfortable doing it. It's like drawing horses. You know, if you only draw horses once every 10 years, you can't draw a fucking horse to save your life. <laughs> and that's true. Um, and it's the same thing. And uh, I got to the point where I was doing really big, massive characters, you know, credibly. Credibly. So we did that, and then segued from that into uh, All New X-Men, which was funny because that was a book I was supposed to take on when I came back to, to Marvel. And with Dennis Hopeless, and um, and did that book for a while. Uh, seemed like a long while. And uh, now I'm doing Scarlet Spider, and with um, Peter David. 
who's just a fabulous guy. And um, I'm having a great time with it. It's kind of a segue back into the spider books, which I haven't done for a long time, and I've been kind of wanting to do because I still love drawing Spider-Man, and I think I'm pretty good at it. So, But I just found out yesterday that I'm leaving Scarlet Spider-Man to do something, Scarlet Spider to do something else. I can't talk about it yet because I don't think it's like open knowledge. But uh, I'm kind of sad because I was really enjoying Scarlet Spider, but what they're offering is something I think they need me to do, they want me to do, and... You know, might be a good thing. So, and after that, I think I'm, guys, since Victor knows about it, they must be out there. I'm going to be doing uh, Venom Lethal Protector. I don't know if it's a mini series or an ongoing or what. Um, I hope it's a mini series because I really don't want to do an ongoing of Venom because it's just too Venom y. Um, they offered me Carnage, the ongoing Carnage book with, uh, um, oh, what's the name of the writer? I can't remember now. I've been around forever. Uh,. Jerry something I think um, but I turned it down Cole because you know I just I that's not the tone of book I want to draw I want to draw something a little bit you know more uplifting than serial killers and mass killers and yeah 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 so anyway that's where I am and I'm really tired I've been up since 3 I've been bitching about it all morning so I'm going to go and take a nap because I'm old and it was nice talking to you um, Instagram question from Canadi- Canadian Comics what got you into drawing comics and are you enjoying working on the new Venom variant covers? Uh, yes, I've enjoyed the Venom variant covers I've done because, A, they, you know, the original art sells for lots of money. And uh, and I've kept a couple of them. But he's fun to draw in, like, instances like that. So, I, you know, you can go to town on a tongue and a teeth and a whatever. But uh, what got me into drawing comics is something I've ever wanted to do. I mean, I've got five brothers and a sister. None of them draw. None of them have an artistic bone in the body. I have a twin brother, okay, who were totally fraternal. Mike's never been married. I've been married coming on 37 years. Please, God, help me. <laughs> um, he He's a clothes horse. Uh, I just I don't care about clothes, even though I am wearing a $1,000 jacket right now. And that's a long story, too. Uh you know, when the Avengers movie, he bought his first house the year the Avengers movie came out that that spring. And so my wife and I went up to Ohio where he still lives, uh, God help him, and um, to see his house. And so he's we're up there figuring something to do. And he's like, hey, you want to go see the Avengers? I said, sure. And I'd already seen it like a couple of times, and so did my wife. So we went to the Cineplex, and we saw Avengers. And so we're coming out of the movie. He's driving us back to his house. And I said, so, so Mike, how'd you like the movie? And it's because it's hard to tell with him. He's very resident reserved a lot like me ha and um he goes and i do a really good mic impression all my brothers tell me uh, i liked it i said you did yeah i said i got a couple questions though i said you do he goes yeah says, so at the end of the movie the guy with the hammer he goes home and my wife and i about died we're like the guy with the fucking hammer you mean thor he goes oh yeah i says oh come on you know it's like he plays golf all. He loves golf. I hate golf. But, you know, I know who Jack Nich- Nicholas is. How do you not know who fucking Thor is, you know? So that's how fraternal we are. Uh, and um, I saw my first comic when I was like eight or nine years old. We were coming back from Japan. And my dad, st- we were driving from the West Coast to Florida. And uh, my dad pulled into this place and bought warm Dr. Peppers and four or five comics off a of rack. And... My first comic I read was a Superboy comic. Something He's fighting a Kryptonian dragon. They made a famous model out of it years and years and years ago, way before your children were born. And uh, probably before some of your parents were born. Fuck you. And um, <laughs> and I just fell in love. And my dad, the colonel, had no idea what the hell to do with me. So And I didn't mean fuck you. I'm an American. We say that all the time. you know. So anyway, I'm done now because I'm really getting tired. Okay. Bye. <laughs>